In this video, we're trying to log on P100. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're continuing to explore different grinders and this time we kind of brought a heavy hitter. So something in a little bit of a different price class than what we're used to here at April. We've been testing a lot of hand grinders, a lot of kind of smaller, more affordable stuff. Now we're kind of bringing in the big guns. Um, so this, uh, we actually borrowed from a good friend of ours, uh, which is really nice. So uh, we have it for a few weeks, we're testing it. We're gonna make two different videos. Uh, this first video will be about espresso. Second video will be about filter coffee. And basically it should be able to do both uh, quite well. The company that produced this is called Option O, based in Australia, and from what we understand, they have a factory or self-owned production in China. So that's where all of this is produced, more or less. Um, this specific model is called Logom P100. Uh, sits with 98 millimeter SSP uniformity burst, which is kind of interesting. One, it means it's a very large burst set, which should be very helpful when it comes to uniformity. Two, SSP is something that we're quite familiar with here at April. We've used their burst set in various shapes and forms here, trout brewing. We use it partially in our diddings that we use for our shop as well here, but that's a different story. So interesting burst set, uh, interesting shape of grinder. One of the things that uh, you can do is you can change basically grind speed, so the RPM on the burst. That's something we've chosen not to do in this video now. We're just gonna follow their recommended speed, which seems to be the setting three on pretty much every single um, brew approach that they have, right? So espresso filter and so on. So we're sticking with this, we're making some measurements and discussing a little bit further how RPM can change grind size in the future. The common kind of theory is that the slower grinding will have you more uniform. And that's something that we are gonna look into. However, more specific on espresso. So we tried a bunch of different shots. Uh, we measured a few different microns. We're looking at particle distribution range. I will say one of the things that is really interesting with this grinder is that it does seem to be more uniform than other grinders. Also, if we're benchmarking basically the grind quality with let's say a Ditting or an EK43, both very professional grinders, to be fair, kind of in the same price range, this is actually more uniform. Now there's always a conversation whether or not is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? It's something in the industry we talked about a lot where we want to have a more uniform grind size. Often when we, for example, brew filter coffee, we find we don't want it because it creates a little bit of a boring cup profile. We want more diversity and range and expressiveness in the coffees. When it comes to espresso, it kind of behaves similar. So I think the range of quality you're getting, the style of espresso you're getting is a little bit more singular, but can still be really interesting. Now, the grinder comes with a few different tools. Uh, one of the things that is always discussed with any grinder at the moment is retention. So basically, how much coffee do you lose when you grind? Retention is important, one, because you want a uniform, efficient workflow. Two, you don't want to have to clean your burr set all the time. Basically, if you have a lot of retention, you have a lot of coffee still stuck in your grinder, and that's going to build up over time and create various issues, right? Now, when we've been using this grinder, it's kind of interesting. We have a very, very low retention, basically nothing at all based on what we can measure. And this is actually among the first time I discovered this on a grinder, because usually that's something that a grinder is pitching, but then that's actually not the case if you use it. But so far, this has been interesting. Now, to be able to kind of make this easier to have less retention, they pitched basically two different ways to do it. One, they give you this little spray bottle with water. It's kind of quite common that spraying a little bit of water on the coffee can reduce statics and actually make sure more of that coffee comes out, which to be fair, could be true. Um, I don't spray my coffee with water because I just I don't feel very comfortable doing it. So we actually haven't done it here and we haven't needed it, uh, but you could do it if you want to. Now they have two different settings on um, grinding and it's kind of one is just a manual on and off with a standard RPM. The second one is a little bit interesting. It's what they call an automated. So kind of similar to the fellow odd, it basically grinds while there's coffee in the chamber and then stops grinding. But the biggest difference here is that the RPM actually speeds up in the end of the dosing, making sure that more coffee comes out. Now, it's always a discussion whether like, do you want that? Is that affecting taste quality? 
uh, is that retention beneficial taste-wise in some degree, right? Keep in mind, most coffee in the industry is brewed with some kind of retention, especially professionally in a coffee shop, right? Uh, however, it's interesting. And in on the kind of subject of trying to avoid retention, yes, it works, right? So that's interesting. However, we also found in terms of grinding that the main thing here is this little thing. So it basically has a little spring here that allows you to push coffee out. And more or less, regardless if you use the manual or the automatic, we have to use this. So if we don't tap out in the end, we're gonna lose a lot of coffee pretty much, right? So that's the only kind of, let's say, a uh, little bit of a challenge with the grinder that the last point that comes out is this really large clump of obviously slightly smaller particles, right? So that's something that you have to work with. We haven't really found that it's a negative one for the taste. Uh, but it is something to consider, right? Now, on top of this, especially for espresso, it has some pretty good-looking, interesting tools. Uh, clearly, very well-made build, like, all throughout. It feels very kind of high-end, very luxury. So there's value for money. Uh, this is a standard kind of distribution dosing tool or dosing tool that you often see in one shape or another traditional in the World Barista Championship back when we actually did single dosing. Now, it's not so much of that, so you don't really see it. Uh, so really interesting. You also have another little smaller funnel if you think that's easier to work with and just a classic kind of distribution tool that allows you to pull apart any clumps. And to be fair, there are definitely clumps coming out of this, right? So it's kind of interesting. Now, uh, the micron that we're using for brewing is that we're running basically a 270 micron-ish, uh, plus minus, on a 19 gram dose. And we're brewing this with a kind of a normal special April setup, right? So that means six bar flat pressure, more or less. Uh, obviously on a mud bar system, we're running at 93 degrees Celsius. So a little bit different from what maybe you have at home. Uh, that being said, you should be able to modify that pretty easy. So what we're gonna do now is just kind of show you the workflow. So I go through brew a, brew a coffee uh, or brew an espresso, and then we talk a little bit more about it. So again, like a pretty slow grind in general. And again, you can adjust that, right? So we're on setting three, you can go down to setting one, which is then way slower. Um, what's important to, to pick up here now, right? Is that as you can hear also, I speed it up in the end of the grind, but now we're still gonna have to tap this and we have quite a lot of coffee still stuck there. So about five taps uh, is pretty good. You're recommended not to do it when it's on. So keep that in mind. Uh, but what's interesting now then, is that I basically push 19.3 grams in and I'm getting 19.3 grams out. And that's, for me, in a world of espresso brewing, is a very rare thing. So I really actually appreciate that. So actually really smooth to, to grind this out, smooth little tool to work with. Uh, there are quite noticeable clumps in the coffee, uh, which is something that we don't want when we're brewing. Uh, but then again, then that's basically where this comes in handy, right? And especially when you work with a funnel like this, I can very easily go in and kind of break up any of the clumps, right? So we do that, we take that out. Keep in mind, for in a world of, of coffee competition, uh, this bed is not going to be something that you can use. You're going to be scored out on the technical. So technically, you want to be more uniform from a visual standpoint. It's not going to taste better, but it's something to consider. Nineteen gram simple temp. A little bit of a flush, and then, as per usual, we're gonna pull or extend out the volume of the espresso um, quite a lot in order to really get all of those beautiful flavors out. Uh, we're brewing a natural process sidra from the La Palma Tucan farm in Colombia, one of our current limited coffees. I think what, what's interesting here, especially for, for us, because we're using this setup, obviously brewing in the store, is that I have a much, much wider range of brew times that I can work with on this grinder than on both a Ditting or an EK. Um, and we can say that for sure, given the experience that we have brewing in, in, in this bar. 
So we're pulling this 19 gram, we're pulling about 50 gram, 58 grams out, uh, plus minus one gram. Uh, and we're doing that in around 20 seconds. So that basically gives us the character of espresso that we're looking for. But again, what's interesting here is that if I want to make this a 30 second shot on the same pressure with this grinder, I could. I don't want to because it's not going to taste good, but I could. And I really appreciate that option. So espresso wise here, we actually have a very wide range of stuff that we can do with this grinder, which makes it actually really, really interesting. So can it make tasty espresso? Yes, it can. Um, is it an easy workflow? Yes. Does it feel kind of well-made and well-structured? Yes. Um, is it an interesting burset? Yes. Um, would I be curious to try a different burset? Yes. So one of the things that we have noticed on the SSP bursts is that they're not always what we're looking for, especially when it comes to filter brewing. But that's something that we talk in the, in the next video when we're gonna do filter brewing with the grinder. Um, so I would be very curious to see if there's another brand or another version that they maybe can do themselves that can come out uh, that could actually be really interesting to try. But overall, it's a really interesting uh, little grinder. Uh, do we recommend it? I think we looked online, it's about $2,600, which is it's a little bit of an investment for sure. Uh, I think if you're really into coffee brewing, it makes sense. If you're a coffee shop, it probably makes sense. Um, so again, like quite interesting. We're gonna play a little bit more with it, come up with more videos. I know that some of you already have it, even though it's quite hard to get. So we're super curious to hear your thoughts on it. Have you used it? Uh, do you feel that it's much better than another alternative, for example? As per usual, we're taking the conversation over to Patreon as well to look into some kind of more in-depth details. Uh, we're gonna see if we can uh, bring in our friend as well that's been using this at home for a long time and see if he has any thoughts on it as well. Um, with that, we just wanna say thank you for watching and we'll be back with a version two of this with Filter Coffee. Thank you. We wanna give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.